2019, this really is a big year for Renault. Last year, fourth in the championship, was very much a year since their return to Formula One in 2016 that they matured, really pushed a car out there that was quick enough to be leading the midfield. 2019, they really need to consolidate that position, and with that, we have the RS19, their car, and it really is a big change for the team this year. This really is very much an all new car. Renault themselves have said that this car is so new it's only the steering rack that they've carried over from previous years. And we can see with the regulation changes and with this updated car that it is very much a new concept for the team. And uh, this could be good and bad. It means that they hopefully should find some performance, but it may take some time to understand and develop those ideas enough to be able to beat some of the other teams that are joining them in the midfield. Kicking off regulation changes with the front end. We won't look in too much detail at the front wing. Again, as we've said, with lots of these new cars, it's a very simplistic wing just to get them testing. Complicated versions will come subsequently. But Renault have been very kind to us and actually added lots of detail uh, on the front wing in these digital renders. And we can believe these details to be quite accurate. So you can see things like the front wing flap adjusters and the slot gap separators are all being used not just for their primary purpose, but also shaped aerodynamically to help create the Y250 vortex and the outwash effect at the end plate. Lots of teams will be playing with these bits of add-on hardware, which have been quite tightly restricted in the regulations, but there is some freedom with some of these parts and their design to actually be quite effective aerodynamically. The rest of the nose is very similar to what we've seen from Renault before with its thumb tip uh, nose. And what initially looks like a very shallow nose and lots of open area here, this is actually just a trick because Renault haven't fitted the turning vanes under the nose here, which would black out this area in a normal photograph. So there's lots of bits to add on here. And at this stage, Renault don't appear to be running an S duct in their nose, but again, very simple to add subsequently during testing in at the first races. Front is very much about the regulation changes. The midsection really is the big concept change for Renault. Now they kept their traditional shaped inlet high up, very wide, very narrow to feed the air box for the engine and to cool some of the radiators mounted above the engine at the back of the car. The big change is to the change to the high top side pod, something that they didn't have last year. And it's very Red Bull-esque in its design in that they've kept this fin at the top and the side impact structure inside the bodywork below here is used to mount the uh, X vanes at the side or the aero cats as we'll come to have a look at subsequently. Mirrors haven't been mounted outboard and they're only using a single uh, mounting so we can believe that Renault will be changing some detail with the mirrors. What we can also see is just a couple of little fins to the side of the cockpit here which are just used to help shape the airflow to get it around the halo and connect all the way down for the rear bodywork towards the diffuser and the rear crash structure to help the upwash at the back of the car. The other interesting thing that we see on the Renault here is I've kept the uh, front wheel in view here. So they have this inner room as we've seen the Haas and the Ferrari use again to grab air blown around the brake disc to create some outwash to push it tyre wake away from the rear of the car. And also as we've seen on uh, other cars like the Red Bull they've got some drillings in the outboard part of the axle here, outboard of the wheel nut. If they're blowing air through here then this would actually be illegal so we'll need to have a look during testing when the wheels are off to see exactly what Renault are doing. Is this just a little bit of light weighting or is there something cleverer going on with the uh, centre of the wheel here? Very hard to see with all this black paint and carbon fibre but we see some details of the Renault barge boards that we can accept to be quite accurate. As we've seen before the height in this area has been restricted so teams can't put bodywork high up. This is why you see what Renault called the aero cap which is a bit of a joke really uh, in terms of naming, uh, which is where this sweeping X vane comes down on the side pod. Last year it swept down, it had four little feet, actually looked like a cat, so they call it the aero cat. This year it's slightly different and you get some vanes mounted to the front of it, although I'm sure Renault will still call it that. And then you can see this curve to the top of the barge boards. And what's happening is not just up to the flat shape of the barge board coming out, but they're actually curling the top of the barge board and making it join the chassis. And this creates some downwash, which again, as we've seen so often, pushes the air through the side pod undercut over to the diffuser to create more downforce. So this kind of shaping, initially used by McLaren, interestingly, is being copied quite broadly uh, across the grid. When we come to look at the back of the car, things become much more conventional. You see the side pods tuck underneath to allow so much airflow to come through the undercut and over the full width of the diffuser to create downforce. Interestingly, the rear wishbones are somewhat drooped down towards the mountings on the upright, not mounted as high and proud as lots of other teams do, which just use the wishbone shapes to act as a flow control device towards the rear wing. But again, we have to be a little bit careful with these digital images to see what's being changed 
Equally, the rear wing looks quite simple. We don't see the hanging vanes and bits and pieces that other teams are using, so we'd be a bit suspicious of what's happening here. Renault have applied a, a small monkey seat uh, on the rear wing pylons, and they have very much changed the concept that they had last year, where they had a very high exhaust blowing underneath the top rear wing in order to create a bit of low speed downforce. Now the exhaust is mounted much lower, much flatter, with the wastegates mounted low down on either side of it, because the wing now is much higher, and it would be very hard to bring the exhaust high enough to blow fully under the rear wing. So it looks like that concept has been put away. But with that change, it suggests that Renault have got some new thinking, and I think this is what comes across with the whole of the RS19. This is very much their new step into Formula One, having grown over these past few years. And it's going to be a very tight midfield, and there's no reason to think that Renault won't be still leading that midfield like they did last year. But let's see how Renault do in 2019.